often use this analogy. I'll talk about their loved one being over there in a whirlpool and how anxiety provoking, hurtful and scary it must be to see their loved one in a whirlpool and it feels like they're drowning. And then we'll talk about human instinct and that often when we see someone in a whirlpool and they're stuck or afraid, our urge is to jump in and try and save them. But we'll explore the fact that what we know about drowning prevention is that we should never jump in the water. And so we all kind of agree that no one's jumping in the water, that it's not helpful for their loved one and it's not helpful for them because both people could drown. And so we'll explore how to not jump in, how to resist those urges to jump in and how to keep on the bank. And so they'll identify that they do have urges to jump in, they do want to rescue them, they do want to save them, and yet the loved one might not want to be saved, might not want to be rescued, and that it doesn't work that way anyways. So they often pick where on the bank they feel the most comfortable waiting for their loved one to rescue themselves and get out of the whirlpool. Some people feel more comfortable being right beside the whirlpool talking to them, comforting them, encouraging them to get out. Other people are a bit more exhausted and don't have energy to stand by the whirlpool and watch and wait. So maybe they're somewhere a bit further. Talking to them every once in a while, reminding them that they're here right where they left them, but that they can't be right beside them watching them. Others are even further away. Maybe they're at the gym, maybe they're doing lots of self-care, and they're at a place in life where they're saying, I'm over here taking care of me, and you need to start taking care of you, and I'll be right here when you're ready to come on out, and we can just live life together. I'll be taking care of me, you'll be taking care of you. Some people talk about dipping their toe in the water, that they feel that they just can't leave, other people feel as though the constant communication kind of keeps hooking them back in. So the family member's screaming for help, they're throwing a lifeline, the family member says, I don't want any help, and that that back and forth can just become too exhausting and that maybe they need a bit of space from the whirlpool. That analogy just gives us lots of opportunities to talk about where on the bank they want to be, where on the bank they feel the safest, and how to break some of those patterns that have become exhausting for them and that probably aren't helpful for their loved one or for them. It also allows us in family member group to have a conversation about is it selfish to be far away from the whirlpool? Can we be at the gym? Can we be taking care of ourselves? And it sparks really good conversation about um, how to wait for someone to make change and how to be taking care of yourself while you wait for someone to, to make change and how tough that can be and yet how important it can be. So this analogy is just a great way to, to spark the conversation about setting boundaries, becoming unhooked, loving with detachment and all sorts of different things that we kind of keep coming back to this analogy as we go through family members.